fight for me, right? Yo, what's going on guys? Welcome back to a brand new video on the channel. On today's video, I'm going to be showing you exactly how you can do this insane and really good looking effect in Sony Vegas Pro. Now, this is actually quite easy to do. If you just stick around and watch the whole video all the way through, then you're going to find this extremely easy and it's going to be really, really good for your next Fortnite highlight video or montage. Really quickly, just before we get into the actual video, all I ask you guys to do is drop a like and subscribe to the channel with post notifications on. And if you are a part of the notification gang, then you're an absolute legend. Thank you so much. If you're not, make sure to go ahead and join the notification gang. It is so, so good. You guys are the best. And I do shout out three people from my notification gang in every single video. So you don't want to miss out on that. Also, if you guys would like to support me even further, you can use code Tara in the item shop. It does reset every single month. So I'm guaranteed a lot of you guys don't have it in the shop. So if you can just put in code Tara, that means the world to me. But let's get straight into the video. All right, guys. So as always, the first thing you want to go ahead and do is get your clip and song of choice. And then make sure to mark up the beat drop of the song. So in my example right here, as you can see, the beat drop is here where the sort of amplitude of the song goes up and you can see the sort of waves so you want to press m on your keyboard to create a marker and that's going to signify where we're going to put the effect because that's where the kill is going to happen so now you want to roughly sync it you want to uh, trim your clip down until you find the part where the shield crack happens so mine is right here then you want to drag and drop this in line with the marker and drag it out to the certain length that you want it as then I'm just going to fade this in because I'm doing a tutorial so it's only one clip. You don't have to do that but you can add transitions at the end. Then what you want to go ahead and do is add velocity. So right click, insert remove envelope, add velocity. Then you want to double click here, make a point and move this onto the marker. Then put this to 300%, go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 frames to the left. Make a point right here, then put this to normal velocity. And then you want to go back to the 300 point uh, here and go 1 to the right and then go about three quarters in and put this to 50%. And that is going to perfectly sync your clip for the velocity. Now, once you've gone ahead and done this, you want to find where we're gonna add the effect that goes before the kill and where it goes after. So you wanna go one frame to the left. By the way, if you wanna move individual frames, you can use these buttons here or just the arrow keys on your keyboard. Then you wanna split the clip here. And this is where we're gonna put the effect after the kill, where the 200 pump is. It might be different for you, but that's my case. Okay, so once you've gone ahead and split the clip where the effect is gonna happen, you wanna find the area where you wanna put the effect before the kill, which looks really clean. So in order to do this, you wanna to go to this point here. You wanna double click. You wanna click minus 30 and hit enter. Then whenever this is, you wanna go ahead and split the clip. Now from here, this is where we're going to be adding the effect before the kill, and this is where we're going to be adding the effect after the kill. Okay guys, so the first effect we're going to be going ahead and doing for the pre-effect is going to be BCC Temporal Blur. Now, this is quite common in editing, but I haven't really seen it being used in highlight edits too much. So I'm going to show you how you can use it before an effect to really help build it up, and it's honestly really, really clean. So what you want to go ahead and do is go ahead and copy my settings right here. Now we're going to move the amount of frames to zero first. Then we're going to keyframe it and then we're going to go to the end of the clip and put this back up to 2.45 and that's basically all you need to do it's kind of sort of it's, it's kind of weird it's like a sort of blur that will continually grow and move different frames as it gets on but honestly it looks really really clean before a kill then the next thing we're going to go ahead and add is edge raise now you guys know i'm a big fan of this effect it's quite underrated but i use it a lot and i think it's really really good so you want to go ahead and go and copy my settings right here now again here the color is completely customizable but what i like to do is have the color of the edge rays the same as the color of the glow that we're going to do after the kill so for this one specifically i'm just going to go for some sort of purple shade that looks good to me then you want to put the raise brightness to zero uh you want to hit keyframe so at the start it's going to keyframe at zero then go back to the end and go to 3.5 and that's just going to build a bit of edge rays around the character and stuff and it's going to look really really clean now once you've gone ahead and done that we're going to add the final effect for the pre-effect which is just a bit of hue sap bright and we're just going to take all the color out so we're going to go to saturation at one at the start and we're going to go to the end of the clip again and we're going to go ahead and put this down to zero and that is basically going to remove all the color but you don't want it to remove the edge rays so what you want to go ahead and do is put that below the edge rays there and that is basically going to have your pre-effect done Alright guys, so now that we've gone ahead and done the pre-effect, pretty simple and pretty easy to do, we're going to be moving on to something even easier, which is going to be the afterkill effect. Now this is one of the cleanest and most aesthetically pleasing effects. I don't know why I described it like that to be honest, but I'm just telling you, it's some god tier effect. So what you want to go ahead and do is go and search film glow. 
So we're going to be using BCC for Glow for this. It's not a Glow that I cover too often, but it's actually really, really nice. So you want to put the default version on and then copy my settings. As you can see, the come out, the Glow comes out like sort of lines. I don't know, I think that looks really nice. Uh, you want to keyframe the Glow Intensity. Go about 20-ish frames in. Because the Glow isn't that bright, you just want to make it last quite a while. So yeah. Then you want to put this down to zero. Now that the Glow is done, now we can go ahead and add Shake. So yeah. I uh, want to go ahead and put the default version on and then copy my settings. This is going to be the impact shake. So I'm just going to open these all up so you guys can copy them. Feel free to pause the video if you like. Then you want to keyframe the amplitude. You want to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 frames in. Then you want to put this down to 0. Go back to the start and go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 in. And then you want to put that to 2. And that is basically your impact shake done. After you've gone ahead and added the impact shape, we're going to add the regular highlight shake. I know a lot of you guys have your own settings for this, but if you want to copy mine, then I'm just going to quickly open this up. It would actually work. Yep, so you can go ahead and pause the video, copy these settings right here if you like. I'm going to go a little bit after the film glow, so around 20 out of the 30 is good. It's all up to personal preference and really is dependent on the clip, but if you want to be safe, around 20 frames for the film glow and 20 frames for the regular shake is good. But for the Y impact shake, make sure you copy what I did. Now the next thing we're going to add is just flicker. This is going to really enhance the brightness and just obviously flicker the clip, which does make it look a lot better. You want to keyframe the amplitude. I recommend just going to the end to be honest and putting this down to zero. Feel free to copy my settings again. Once we've gone ahead and done the flicker, the final thing we're going to be adding is a bit of distort RGB. This can just enhance the effect, add a bit of RGB and sort of shift the image around a little bit and really Give it a bit of spice, mate, if you know what I'm saying. Do me a favor. Shut the fuck up. I don't know what I'm saying, to be honest, but it just makes it look good. So you want to put the amount to two, go ahead and copy these settings. Then I recommend going exactly where the Y shake finishes. As you can see, it looks pretty sick. And then you can put this down to zero. And yeah, guys, that is basically the whole effect done. So yeah, guys, that's basically the whole video there. I really hope you did enjoy it, and this video did help you out in some way. If it did, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel with post notifications on. It literally takes two seconds out of your day, but it means the absolute world to me. It barely takes any time at all, and it is really, really appreciated. So thank you guys so much for that. If you want to support me even further, you can use code Tarot in the item shop, and you can join my insane Discord community in description. It's got 4,000 insane editors, they're all really really good really really nice and will help you with editing opinions so giving you opinions on your edits and they're also going to help you if you're stuck with anything in editing like downloading plugins or just doing a certain effect so i highly recommend you join that discord link in the description and yeah guys that's basically the whole video i really hope you did enjoy and i'll see you guys in the next one peace